Welcome back to Lab Wednesday at Sugar MD. This is Dr. Ahmed Ergin, your endocrinologist, your diabetes specialist. There is one lab I have seen predict diabetes years before glucose rises. One lab that reveals the liver's true health. And one lab that exposes stress levels, diet quality, muscle mass, inflammation, sleep, and pancreatic strain all at once. It's not fasting glucose. It's not A1C. It's not even your triglycerides. It is fasting insulin, the most overlooked early warning system in modern medicine. And today, I'm going to show you exactly why this lab can completely change how you understand metabolic disease. Number one, what fasting insulin really reveals. We'll talk about this hidden physiology. Fasting insulin tells you one thing extremely clearly. How much effort your pancreas must exert to keep your glucose in range. Most people think glucose is normal, I'm fine. But glucose is the last metric to change. Insulin rises first, often for like 5-10 years before glucose, you know, rise. That means that you can have beautiful glucose numbers, beautiful A1C, and still be metabolically failing behind the scenes. That's why fasting insulin is so powerful. It reveals the early part of the disease process, the invisible part. Why doctors ignore this test? Let's be honest here. This frustrates me every week in my clinic. Fasting insulin is not ignored because it is irrelevant. It is ignored because it is not part of diabetes screening guidelines. Now, do doctors learn about insulin and insulin resistance and all that? Yes, they do. But when they go to practice, who dictates the medicine? Insurance companies. If you detect high insulin and diagnose an insulin resistance, now insulin, uh, the insurance company has to deal with that. So they don't want doctors to diagnose disease early. They don't want to spend more money. So most insurance companies, they want to carry them to Medicare and then let the Medicare take care of it because we don't want to spend money on these people. So why would I diagnose a diabetes early, pre-diabetes early, insulin resistance early and pay all this money to cover testing and treatment and all that? Instead, I'll just wait until 10 more years and when they really become diabetic and they're really screwed up. And by the time they may be in Medicare right and clinicians unfortunately are forced to order because you know a doctor will order something insurance like oh it's not covered and the patient is pissed or like why 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 do doctors order something that insurance doesn't cover well it's not doctor's fault it's the insurance companies so here's the deal medical education focuses on also late stage markers like glucose and a1c so once you become advanced in medical school you pass this basic science part the beautiful part then you become practitioner. Then you, you need to be practical, right? And then you will start looking at some things like, oh, just look at glucose A1C quick. So even though fasting insulin is the earliest biomarker, it's not the default biomarker. All right, I just got invaded in my room and uh, my daughter is here. She wants to say hello to you all. Come here, Bubba. Come here, baby. Okay. This is my beautiful daughter. All right, after this break, let's continue. I'm sorry about that what high fasting insulin does actually inside your body. Now, this, you know, the important part is that, you know, because this is like where most people suddenly realize, like, hey, I think I've been missing something, you know, like, what's wrong with this fasting insulin? Now, high fasting insulin actually will cause this fat gain, even with low calories, and you're going to have locked fat cells. Why? Because insulin prevents the fat release. So, People will say, I, I can't lose weight even if I eat nothing. Well, because your fat cells are locked. Now, high blood pressure, because your renin angiotensin system is activated. Fatty liver, clearly, because you know your liver is the place that you store fat mostly, primarily, and the glucose. Uh, and the insulin does exact that. And they are constantly hungry because insulin is high, is trying to drag the glucose down. And it will lead to other hormonal disruptions, such as PCOS. For example, insulin will go stimulate ovaries and will make a lot of testosterone, for example, or DHEAS. High triglycerides will, will happen, low HDL. So if you have these, you're more than likely insulin resistant. Your sleep will be disrupted. That's inflammation will develop. 
you're gonna have energy crashes, you're gonna have brain fog. This is why people say, I'm doing everything right, but my body isn't responding. And interestingly, a lot of people come to me with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and they have all these symptoms, and they think that it is their thyroid, but in reality, it is their insulin resistance in most cases. So let me tell you this, the numbers actually matter. The reference range is meaningless though. A lot of people, my patients will come to me and say, oh, this is on the high side, this is on the low side, this is off the range. We don't really interpret labs based on reference ranges, okay, unfortunately. I mean, yes, uh, for example, like your A1C, I'm gonna have to give you the simplest example. So your A1C reference range is 5.7 to, let's say, 6.5, right? That is, that's a pre-diabetic range. Uh, or you may have up to 5.7 is they consider normal. But in reality, 5.5 is not normal. You will see that your insulin levels are actually high. So when I tell people that your levels are not normal, and when it comes to uh, fasting labs, insulin levels up to 24 is normal. And, and when we do HOMA IR score, insulin level is 14, and we tell them, hey, that's not normal. They're like, what do you mean? It's normal, and it's a normal reference range. But it's not how it works, really. So because it's all respective to each other, like how's your glucose, what's your insulin, your respectively, you know, compared to each other. Meanwhile, you know, your metabolic damage starts around seven or eight insulin even. Now, here's the only range that truly matters. I'll say this, if your insulin, fasting insulin is two to six, that's pretty optimal. Seven to 12, you're getting maybe early insulin resistance. 13 to 20 is pretty established insulin resistance. Now, if you're 20, by the time you're in the positive range in the refer or you're outside the reference range, you're having a high pancreatic strain. Now, these numbers predict metabolic disease far earlier than your glucose or your, or your A1C. So why insulin plus glucose together are a metabolic lie detector? Well, this combination is magic because it exposes the truth instantly. Here are patterns that fool most doctors. Pattern A, you're gonna look normal glucose and high insulin. For example, glucose is 90 milligram per deciliter, insulin is 19. That's hidden insulin resistance. Pancreas is overworking. Glucose is only normal because insulin is high. Now pattern B is high glucose and low insulin. For example, glucose is 112, insulin is four. Now that's really not insulin resistance. It's possibly low carb stress response. If you are for example, uh, on a keto diet, sometimes that happens, you know, it's a stress response, your insulin will not go down as much, if, especially on a carnivore diet, because most keto people that are actually on carnivore, they think they're on keto, but uh, that can raise the insulin. Or it could be early pancreatic fatigue as well, so if you have uh, some sort of genetic diabetes or antibodies against your pancreas, that can also happen. And pattern C, they're both low, like Glucose is 8 to 2, insulin is 3, that is great. That's called metabolic flexibility. And pattern D is they're both high, and that means your advanced metabolic dysfunction. Fat delivery is likely, and there's a very high pancreatic overload. This is why fasting insulin is so valuable that it lets you interpret glucose correctly instead of guessing. Now, fasting insulin plus triglycerides, that is a metabolic x-ray for you. Triglycerides tell the story faster than cholesterol ever will because your total cholesterol includes the triglycerides, right? But triglyceride gives you a whole lot of information. Most people look at their total cholesterol and they think they're fine, but their triglyceride is high and they don't care. So if you're thin or overweight, if triglycerides are over 100, right, doesn't matter what your weight is, and fasting insulin is high, that is metabolic dysfunction, period. I don't care what everybody else thinks. Now, the real world signs that your fasting insulin is high. Now, people with high fasting insulin usually feel typically like hungry, you know, shortly after meals, two hours after they're still hungry, carb cravings, right? Difficult to losing weight. They have fatigue after eating. They feel like they want to go to sleep. Uh, they crash and they have very low energy in the afternoon and they're gaining fat around the belly. Irritability also if meals are delayed because their glucose is, is fluctuating so much and dizziness when they're fasting because they're not metabolically flexible. They cannot switch to fat burning. And nighttime snacking urges, they wake up and they just, you know, eat a bunch of carbs and they end up with brain fog in the morning. Now, most patients think these are a normal part of life. Well, they're not. They are metabolic messages for you. Now, how to lower 
Fasting insulin then. Let's talk about no fluff, just some action. Build muscle. This has the strongest insulin lowering effect of any intervention, including diet. It's more important than the, your diet. Most people can diet, but they cannot exercise. Exercise is a big thing that people cannot get over. So number two, I would say stop late night eating. Insulin has no time to fall before your sleep if you eat late. And you got to fix breakfast composition. Why? Because protein plus fiber plus healthy fat plus slow carbs, they are going to lower your 24 hour insulin output almost immediately. And you're going to have to improve liver health. Liver insulin resistance is a huge factor in fasting insulin. And what else? We have to control cortisol, right? Cortisol drives fasting insulin even without food. And definitely use some targeted botanicals. Remember, we have botanicals and herbs on our website at sugarmds.com. High quality, tested four times for purity for you. We have, for example, you can think about gymnema for insulin resistance, bitter melon, fenugreek, neem, holy basil. Now, Indian blackberry, you know, I'm just telling you what comes to my mind. These are all in SugarMD Glucion and SugarMD Advanced Glucose Support. Now, all of these lower your like glucose absorption, they improve your insulin sensitivity, they quiet the carb cravings and reduce the pancreatic strain for you. So what are the takeaway from today's episode? Well, there is one lab that can rewrite your metabolic future. It is basically fasting insulin. If you never measure it, you can miss 10 years of early warning signs. If you catch it early, you can reverse insulin resistance before it becomes diabetes, fatty liver, PCOS, high blood pressure, or cardiovascular disease. Now remember, every Wednesday, we break down labs like this so you can take control of your health long before symptoms appear. So I'll see you next Wednesday. And remember to visit sugarmds.com and write a comment below for me. And ask questions because we have Dr. Ergen answers Fridays, so you may be the one who will be on the next episode.